Hello and good evening, everyone. I am Mr. Chaos the Cunning Wolf. Um, and today is not really Saturday, but I'm going to be reacting to the newest episode in MLP Season 7. So this is Episode 5, Fluttershy Leans In. Now, my good friend Brian Marsh um, told me that this episode actually aired almost a week early in Canada. Yeah, on Treehouse TV, that's our main kids channel up here. And, you know, that's weird. I mean, I know there's been a history of, you know, in season six, where we had the finale air extremely early on Tiny Pop, which is, I think, a British channel. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. And the same thing happened with Top Bolt, you know, that episode with uh, a Vapor Trail and uh, Sky Stinger, I think his name was. But yeah, that episode also aired early on Tiny Pop as well, so now Treehouse is becoming involved in the early airing party. I'll stop. But uh, anyway, so yeah, this episode of uh, Fluttershy Leans In. So okay, so this is obviously going to be a Fluttershy episode because of the title. But uh, Fluttershy Leans In. Uh, but, yeah, this title kind of reminds me of uh, Keep Calm and Flutter On, but... Uh, this is another title, kind of playing with Fluttershy's name, but leans in. Like, what's that? What's that supposed to mean? Like, Fluttershy helps or Fluttershy supports? I mean, we uh, we know her. She's just you know willing to help. So yeah. So I really don't know what's gonna happen in this episode. I'm going it into a completely blind, which all of us bronies should. <laughs> if only we could avoid avoid spoilers. But anyway, so I'm going to stop talking now, and we're just going to get to reacting, because that's what you people came here to see. So anyway, so yeah, MLP Season 7, Episode 5, Fluttershy Leans In. So without further ado, let's get started. It's uh, been a while since we saw the zooming scene into uh, Fluttershy's cottage. Uh-oh. Uh, oh! Is he dead? The books are heavy. Oh, God. Apparently his foot turned into a sausage. His foot has sausage-itis. <laughs> I, like, I like how they still have the little wheelchair in there. I like how they still have the little wheelchair for the mice in some episode from where I remember. That must be painful for him to be stuck in that same face all the way to the vet. I think it's a- I think it's a pole door, Fluttershy. Let me guess, it's a pole door. Oh wait, it is a push door, it was just- Oh, this is a new character. I don't think I can take an even one more critter. Who's like who's animals? Applejack's animals? <laughs> okay, I, I like how that giraffe is animated. I like how the giraffe has a uh, very pony like eyes and is animated very similarly. So, um there there are really not that many animals in Ponyville other than Applejack's farm and I don't know, maybe the pet shop and Slender Size Cottage, so Hey, there's the the raccoons from Manhattan. I I think. I mean, it could be any. I don't know. Hey, those koalas down there are new. It kind of is. Get Fluttershy to help you. Oh wait, is this where the title comes in? Fluttershy leans in. Uh, Angel doesn't like cute talk. Yeah, there you go. Oh no! Do you suppose it's my fault? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. I That's what I was kind of thinking. Are, the, are those all Fluttershy's animals? I mean, it would kind of make sense, but still, I had other theories like the pet shop or Applejack's farm. Then you'll have all your ducks in a row. <laughs> I, I think I think Angel has them all in a row. So he did it. He did your work for you. Oh, oh! Might want to wash your face. 
I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Hey, the main six. Been a while, it's been a while since we've seen them all together. Well, I mean, since all bottled up, but I mean like this. Without Starlight or Trixie around. They don't have anywhere to go. That's just awful. But wait, didn't you kind of make a discovery that they were mostly your animals? Well, then again, where would the giraffe go? Because I don't remember Fluttershy having a giraffe. Feathered or furry, scaly or slimy, every critter would be welcome. Okay, Rainbow Dash is the only one that's getting all sappy. So they feel ready to take on the world. Fluttershy. I've never heard you speak with such conviction. Why why are all the why are all the characters who are like tough getting emotional but everybody else is just staying calm? Like first you made Rainbow Dash cry and then you made the fierce bear cry. I guess Fluttershy is just really good at giving emotional emotionally moving speeches. Okay, I like him. He looks he look he looks weird in, in a funny way. So, can you build it? <laughs> oh that face. Uh uh guys, no, come on, tell the truth. Can you? No walls. More like an enclosure that melts into the trees. With a gate in the back. That way. The animals can return to the forest right when they feel ready. Sneaky! I like it! <laughs> you know, I designed a uh, pinky. I could do the exact same thing right here. I still have the blueprints. Though, it'll take a while to clear all these trees. But I don't uh, need to clear the trees. I yeah, don't. Don't, don't ruin the environment. You sure? Fluttershy will hate you. But I just know the animals would be happiest with dirt brown pillows and leaf green accents. Uh, look into it. Thank uh, when a client has a vision. <laughs> Sometimes uh, need to steer them away from it. Especially uh, if it's dirty. Oh no, I think I called it. Everybody has their own idea. But what could what could Wrangly what could Wrangly what could Wrangler possibly have an idea? Like how could she have a separate idea? She's just a friend. Uh, uh, Fluttershy, I told you we'd be fast. Almost finished with the building already. The color just pops, you know. Really, and very sad. That's not okay. That's directly what she said not to do. Come on, be assertive and honest, Fluttershy. You say you don't. I don't love it. This is not <laughs> there you go, Fluttershy. A giraffe can't fit through this door. With these curtains blocking the light, how are the birds gonna sing in the sunshine? And this is the opposite of a nice hug. I mean, we all worked hard, but none of you did anything I asked for. That's not true. We used the trees just like you asked. And that but you got rid of the trees. You ruined the environment. Well, you didn't ruin all of it, but uh. <sighs> and Wrangler sure made a fool out of me too. I'm sorry, Fluttershy. It's okay. We were all just. It was nice meet. It was nice meeting one of your friends, though, Applejack. Let's go was the right call. So what are you gonna do now? Try again. I'm going to rebuild the sanctuary and do it my way this time. <laughs> Putting an awesome flying course for the birds right there, and a carrot cake stand here. Uh, guys. The library cave. Every pony stop. I appreciate you sharing your thoughts, but I need everyone uh, to respect mine. Other ponies. Okay, that kind of made the scene field, feel a little off. Animals are my field of expertise. And really, Twilight? Why would? This is what I want. You think Twi? You think it, it'd be uh, Twilight saying stop? But no, Fluttershy did. <laughs> really, him? They need construction help for them critters. Big Daddy McCall. Uh, this is a pretty good callback to season five. Fluttershy to the smoke. Let's build us a sanctuary. Okay, this is a nice surprise. 
Hey, Starlight. Oh, hey, Cutie Mark Crusaders. More good instrument, more good instrumental that could have gone into a song. Come on. I feel that lately this show has gotten a lot of B scenes with just instrumental, with with things working out. I mean, it, it, it's cool, but just listen to this audio. It's very good. Now imagine good. Now imagine good vocals and lyrics with it. And fade. <laughs> All right. Wow. I mean, that was that was really good. That was really good. And that was MLP season seven, episode five. Fluttershy leans in. I I like this episode. Um. I mean, after rewatching it, it kind of feels the same as when I just reacted to it blindly, and that that's not really a bad thing. Um, as always, you know, Fluttershy is cute and all, and she's still kind of shy, but again, with the character development she's undergone in these these past seasons, especially in season five, um, she has gotten much more assertive and kind of a little more serious, and just that just that you know kind of climax scene where. She just, she just confronts uh, all three of the guys, you know, uh, uh, Hard Hat, uh, who was the guy's name? Uh, Dandy Grandeur, and, um, uh, and yeah, uh, Applejack's friend Wrangler. Now, uh, about Wrangler, that, it, it was really cool to see another one of Applejack's friends. I mean, I mean, Applejack has said before that, the Apple family is really big. I mean, it's not just uh, it's not just Apple Bloom, her Big Mac, and Granny Smith. No, there's a lot more members in the Apple family. They're just not all on the same farm. So it was nice to see another one of her friends. Too bad she ended up, you know, being part of the being part of the mess up. But yeah, she was still a pretty cool character. Um, and yeah, back to the thing. I, I like how. Fluttershy again was brave enough to just confront the three of them saying this is not what I wanted I instructed you to uh, make something specifically that I asked you to make you didn't make it so you know what you're fired go home and yeah I, I, again I, we, we've seen kind of assertive scenes from Fluttershy like that before I mean as she was undergoing her character development but this was just another prime example of that and I really liked it I, I really like seeing Fluttershy get braver, bolder, and, you know, more serious. Like, she knows that, you know, if she's kind of being, you know, bucked over, or if she's, you know, being taken taken advantage of, she'll stand up for herself a little more these days. Unfortunately, um, putting your hoof down was a pretty bad start to that. I, We all know Mr. Enter didn't really like that episode. I honestly didn't really like it either. I mean, I didn't think it was as bad as he did, but... To me, it really wasn't a very good start to Fluttershy's character development. You know, Fluttershy working towards not being a pushover. But here it feels better. It feels like, you know, she's actually developing. And she and it actually has effects on her. So this is better. But anyway, we're not talking about that episode right now. Just a little callback, a little reference. Um, but yeah, I really did like that scene. I really liked seeing Fluttershy stand up for herself. And yeah, the structure of this episode... It, I like this episode because... This is one of those easy feeling episodes. Like, I think I've stated the same thing back in. Yeah, I think I've stated the same thing back on my review on Rock Solid Friendship. The way I like uh, My Little Pony episodes is I like the, you know, kind of two part episodes that are all set on a very compelling and emotionally moving adventure, like Canterlot Wedding or The Crystal Empire. And then I just like those singular episodes mid season that are just innocent like this one and of course like the previous one and just like bot all bottled up as well all bottled up just only took place in ponyville so that was another subtle episode but you know what i mean it, um this felt innocent it felt really subtle and you know we weren't really going many places but you know th th this felt like a nice and easy episode and i mean it's fluttershy so why couldn't it feel like an easy episode just fluttershy is a uh, you know becoming more assertive but she's still that that adorable, beautiful, 
cute and, you know, just soft-speaking pony, we all know. So, it, it still felt good to see that Fluttershy still had a lot of her shy personality, but she's changing a little bit as well, and that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, I, I like this episode, I, I like the idea. Um, I like how we got to meet a new character, the, the, the vet, uh, what was the name again? Uh, Dr. What was it? Dr. What? Dr. Fauna. Fauna? What does that even mean? I've stated during the reaction... Okay, Fauna's an interesting name, but what kind of name is that? Dr. Fauna? But anyway, yeah, uh, I liked her character. I mean, yeah, she was a basic new character. She was obviously portrayed as the, the busy veterinarian who was overrun by all the animals, just, you know, getting their treatments, but just not leaving. They were treating it like it was their own personal hotel. And I can't really blame them. I mean, the anim the animals were so used to the wild. They were so used to doing things the manual way. But here, I mean, they're in the labs of luxury. I mean, they got food fresh from the containers and the taps. And, yeah, I can't blame them for not leaving. <laughs> I still can't get that... Can't, can't get that image of the bear... Ugh. You know what happened, but, I mean, it, it just grossed me out to think about it. I mean, I'm sorry if that, you know, kind of... <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to even talk about it any longer. But, um, yeah, I I did like this episode. I, I, I liked the pacing of it. Again, it felt easy. And I really liked that callback to that episode from Season 5. You know, the the uh, Guffles or uh, Mick Colts. Uh, you know which episode I'm talking about. But, yeah, we got to see, we got to see uh, Big Daddy Mick Colts. And, uh, yeah, we all knew. I mean, even though he was small, he really didn't know a lot about buildings, so... I mean, what a clever idea. I mean, we get that character back. <laughs> Again, there's another clever clever connection. Just like in the previous episode, Rock Solid Friendship, we got that really nice connection, you know, where Maud re-explains how she met Starlight, and it was where Maud was telling uh, Starlight where a cave was to store magic in. So again, here's another, well, I mean, this isn't really a connection, but, I mean, it's more of a good callback, but you know what I mean, it feels similar. So yeah, I, I really like how they uh, brought uh, a Big Daddy McColt back. I mean, he'd be a good guy to help out with the construction, and, you know, so far in the season, I like how they're giving old characters, you know, a chance to do future things in future seasons so far. And I, I don't know, there's just something about it I really like. I guess what it is, is sometimes it doesn't feel entirely right for them to introduce new character by new character by new character. I mean, I guess it's something that kind of has to happen in every season, but so far it feels like they're going easy with it. And, you know, Dr. Fwana and all these three other ponies we were introduced to, feels like the new character introduction, introduction pace is at a nice steady pace but meanwhile we get all these uh, callbacks to older characters we get to see well okay may maybe big daddy mccold is the first old character return but to return but you know what i'm saying but uh is that seriously all i have to say about this really I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I really did. I really did like this episode. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. One, one little flaw I want to point out about this episode is the one little scene where you know after Fluttershy confronts all three, you know, helpers. Yeah, helpers. Yeah, right. And um, uh, she apologizes to all the animals. Like, I'm sorry, I couldn't get the sanctuary done. I'm sorry, y'all. We all have to kind of refugee here in this building for tonight. But uh, the scene afterwards where Fluttershy is just telling the main six, you know, I'm sorry, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you guys offered those people to help me, but they really didn't do it as they said. And, and then Pinky, of course, is like, yeah, I didn't know Hard Hat would go to, you know, just force his own ideas upon you instead of doing what you said. And Rarity's like, huh, I didn't know, uh, I didn't know Dandy would, you know, behave in his manner. And of course, Applejack apologizes as well. And, but, um... You know, that the little moment in that scene, right after uh, Fluttershy uh, says, you know what, I'm going to start again, and I'm going to build it my way. And 
it felt mu it felt a little much. It felt off. Like the minute she she says it, then some of the main six starts repeating some of the you know big mistakes that the helpers made. They start doing exactly what they did. Well, I mean they didn't do it, but they were just saying ideas out of nowhere. Rainbow Dash is first like, "Hey, let's add a nice little race course for the birds," and Piggy's like, "Oh, uh, what did I, I think Pinky said something about a party?" And then Twilight, yeah, Twilight comes over and says, "Oh, you think we can have a library cave?" I mean, we all know Twilight, but, I mean, th they just clearly heard Fluttershy say, I want to do this my way, and Fluttershy just, just confesses to everybody that these three supposed helpers that were supposed to be helping her build the sanctuary didn't do their, didn't really do their job. I mean, if you know what I mean, wouldn't it have felt a little less awkward and off? For the main six to have not done anything in that scene. I mean, imagine if they didn't just uh, start spurting their own ideas. And then Fluttershy again had to yell, Every pony, stop it! I want to do this my way. I mean, I get the point, but... Did we really have to be... Did we really have to be shown that one more time? Especially from the main six? And you really think Twilight's really the type to get into a little idea fight like this? I mean, you think Twilight's the most mature one. You'd think it'd be her saying, okay, everybody break it up. Fluttershy said she wanted to do this her way, we're all gonna back off. But no, it was Fluttershy that had to step up. Again, yeah, another opportunity for her to stand up for herself and be assertive. But still, if you know what I mean, to anybody who have saw that scene, I'm, I'm sure some of you felt that the scene was a bit awkward with that moment. I'm just saying, I don't think we really needed the main six to, again, kind of do the same thing that those three other ponies did to Fluttershy, only in, in, in verbal-wise, but, I don't know, I mean, it, it was, I mean, it's the way they wrote the episode, but, still, that, that, that scene just felt kind of awkward in kind of an off way, but I just explained why. But I think that's really the only flaw I have about this episode. Everything else was enjoyable, it was calm... And it was well paced, and I mean, it's Fluttershy. I mean, how can how can you go wrong with her? Okay, maybe we did go a little wrong with her and putting your hoof down, but that's besides the point. I just said we're not talking about that anymore. Um, but yeah, I I did like this episode. Would I give it ten out of ten? Uh. Well, I mean, that little awkward scene I I talked about doesn't really kill the episode that badly. Um, uh, I'd go say, if I think about 9 out of 10, like, I mean, that, that scene was kind of awkward, and, I mean, the episode did feel kind of slow at a point where it's a touch boring at times, but just, it, you know, if you're just, like, an optimistic person, you'll hardly even notice it, but as, like, an observer like me, as a quiet observer like me, it's different. But, yeah, uh, in final, I give this episode a 9 out of 10. I mean, it was really good, and there were very little flaws. So, yes, yeah, so, I mean, good to see Fluttershy helping others again and standing up for herself. Alright, so that was my reaction to and review on MLP Season 7, Episode 5, Fluttershy Leans In. So, yeah, as always, uh, if you guys have your additional thoughts about the episode, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. I look forward to seeing everybody else's review or reaction or whatever they do. Just whatever you do on your channel. I mean, you know Dr. Wolf, he just does reviews. But the majority of us, we do reactions and reviews. Can make the majority of our videos stretch out to about 40 minutes or 30 minutes long. But you know me, I trim to the parts where I'm only reacting. I assume that you guys have seen the original episode first before you go to watch reaction videos. And you do got, got to know, I mean, when you go to watch a reaction video, you're really here to just see the reactions in just a quick little snippet. You're not here to watch the entire episode with me, are you? Well, maybe some of you are. I mean, they're the really loyal fans that'll do that, but... I mean, okay, yeah, in my head I was planning on doing a, a, a video in the future where I furtherly explain why I trim, you know, the MLP reactions too. So I'll, I'll stop, I'll stop. But anyway, so yeah, that was the video, so 
Thank you for joining me this afternoon. If you enjoyed the content of my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Only if you actually enjoy the content of my channel. Not just because I asked you to. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video that I do. Bro hoof to everybody watching, and I will see you next time.